morning everyone welcome back to the homestead Had our first frost overnight as you can see by the windshield but you gotta come check out these trees and what it did to them check that out those are crotons um elephant ears and that's a banana palm obviously but uh they are you know all these stuff uh these plants are all subtropical climate plants and um the banana tree will come back it's, it comes back every year i don't know if you guys can see um you know there was a, a cut branch there from the previous year and it keeps getting shoots but uh it was not happy with that frost so i think we're gonna get this cut down and uh maybe burnt up or discarded someplace the elephant deer is like yeah sorry i can't hang with that frost and the crotons got covered but of course i didn't think they would make it some people have had luck here in south carolina by planting them and uh, they wind up coming back the next year but um I think they were like five bucks, so I'm just gonna toss them. Rocky doesn't seem to be too happy either, even though that's supposed to be cold hardy. So I had to step out for about an hour, and it seems to be, um, from what I can tell, the broccoli perked up quite a bit. So it survived the first frost. The banana tree and the elephant ears, however, did not fare as well. Let me see if I can get you turned around here. Can you see the banana palm? <laughs> <laughs> it's like completely wilted. So I think today uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna chop that sucker down and pull out the elephant ear. And um, I think for the next project, I don't know if we're gonna have time to get to today or not, but we'll still fit it into this video, is we need um, a farm gate for the back of our property where we go, um, go visit the creek and we hunt and we do all that stuff back there. Um, we have a little hand gate or a little you know, man gate rather that you've seen us go through that's made out of chain link. Um, that's how we've been getting back there. But <clears throat> I want to be able to fit a truck back there or the ATV and I want to be able to plant in the spring and if we harvest deers. There's also been some talk about possibly buying the property that's next to us, which is a few acres uh, on the other side of the creek and something we might be interested in. Um, so to be able to access it from the back of our property would be huge. Anyway, let's get this, these uh, trees pulled out. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Bet you never saw trees come down that quick, huh? These things are really soft. So we've got a brush pile. I'm thinking I want to dry these out and burn them. The brush pile's right over there. So um, what I'll do in the meantime is just kind of drag them over there and grape them over the top, let them dry out. And then when uh, the weather's right and all the leaves are down, we'll light a match. Tell you what, the stems of these things feel really weird. Not only do they call them elephant ears, but they look like them, but the stems feel like it's the trunk of an elephant. Kind of slimy and rubbery. Not that an elephant's slimy. I guess they're not slimy, right? They're dry. But they get that kind of rubbery feel to them. Well, hey, Tippy Tail, you come to check out my work? Hate to see you go. Who you hunting? Mia, Mia, where you going? All right, all the trees are in the pile. We'll give them a couple weeks to dry out and uh, we'll make for a nice marshmallow roasting pile. More like an eyebrow roasting pile if we try that. Look how fast that cut is starting to turn brown and oxidize over. And it was like a real fresh white cut about, I don't know, five minutes ago. 
Now that that's something, go down to the gate and get that measured up. back here at this gate that I want to replace as you can well see why so it's actually a double gate and um, I don't want this big of an opening here I only want this I think this is actually I just measured it's eight foot so I want to replace this eight foot section of gate so what I might do for the time being is you know eventually I'll just get rid of this gate sink another pole here and continue my field fencing back there to where our um, man gate is. But for right now, I might just sink a, a T-post right here just to give me something to secure this old gate and to be able to latch this to. Um, so I think that's the plan for right now. I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, maybe cut some of these bushes and, and briars down and whatnot and get this old gate out of here. And then we'll go find ourselves an eight foot gate and get it hung. So I just got a little bit more clarity on what I want to do going forward. Um, at first I was thinking, well, an eight foot gate is cutting it a little bit close for a full size truck to be able to get back there. Most modern pickups are about, I think six and a half foot wide. So it's, it's really getting kind of narrow, especially if you consider mirrors and all that. But as you can see, I've got this Christmas tree that's like right in the middle of that gate and this gate. So it's not like I can really fit a full size truck right here anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and put an eight foot gate there for now, put the T-post in the middle and I'll use that for the, the ATV and then whatever I need to, you know, if we wanna get machinery back there, whatever, that'll be just fine. I'll keep the old gate there for the time being attached to the T-post. And then if I ever do wanna, you know, decide to develop the property next door or whatnot, and to get trucks back there, we could always pull this tree and then I'll have, I'll be set up for another eight foot gate so that we can open up to 16 feet and be able to fit whatever we need through there. So I think that's what we're gonna do. New ATV's been, well, old ATV's been running fairly decent. Still running a little bit rich, or on the rich side, I believe. I uh, adjusted the air fuel mixture down, um, or out, and it got a little bit better, but um, I think I might have to, you know, I'm gonna try that one more time, and if that doesn't work out the uh, overfueling issue, I think I might have to get into that carburetor and take it apart. I might have a stuck uh, float. Sometimes even a little piece of debris can get stuck in between what's called a needle and seat or the, the seat won't seat all the way and it lets fuel in or excessive fuel in so you get a overly rich running situation it's running for right now let's put it on the to-do list of something we got to get to well i'm gonna go see if i can find mrs hidden creek and uh we'll get ourselves a gate i'm probably gonna need an extra hand putting it in a truck I guess they have enough of them. So as it turns out, I didn't need to bring Mrs. Hidden Creek with me after all because somebody came out and uh, loaded the gate for us. That's service. Got you on camera again. 
Mrs. Hidden Creek doesn't like to be on camera. Yeah. As you can see, she's uh, always busy typing away on that computer of hers. She does the work from home thing for uh, for her company. So um, she uh, works herself into uh, a frenzy some nights. So I'm kind of thankful for the opportunity to steal her away for a few minutes to get to hang out in the middle of the day. So um, that was kind of fun. She just hopped in the store so I can say sappy things like that about her without her catching on. But don't tell her I said that though. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get it rested here. It's about 4 p.m. I don't wanna make a bunch of noise because deer start to come out now. And um, we'll get started on this probably tomorrow. I have to trim a lot of these briars and brambles out of the way. Um, and the same thing back there so that the gate can open fully when it's installed. But we'll get back on this in the morning. All right, so it's the next morning. We're gonna continue on that gate. Well, we woke up today to 27 degrees here in South Carolina. It's pretty cold for these here parts. Take a look at the chicken in the water. I broke it up a little bit so they can drink as well as the goat's water, but man, that's cold. It's so fluffy. My goodness, girl. You're like a cotton ball. Look at you. It's a beautiful winter coat you got on, honey. Let's check your water. I bet you got some ice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's cold. So that reminds me of another project that we have coming up. Um, I bought this barrel over here just an empty food grade 30-gallon um, barrel. I'm gonna paint it black. I'm gonna do a rain catchment system on the gutter over here. I'm gonna use the tongue of the trailer to put a piece of plywood and mount the barrel right there. We'll have our gutters drain into it. I'm gonna paint it black so that it you know, attracts a little bit more heat from the sunlight and hopefully keeps it from freezing. But if anything, I could always drop, um, I did this back home in New York and it worked great. I could always drop an aquarium heater inside of it on an extension cord and that'll keep the water from freezing. So I usually bring the quad down to the back of the property when I want to do anything over there, feed the deers, etc. But um, I think to work on the gate, we're going to fire up the truck. I'm going to load it up with some tools and bring that down there so I can work off the tailgate. And also so I could be a little bit of a cheater and hop in there and turn the heat on if I get cold. <laughs> today is that this is the third house now in my life that I've owned. The first house, um, we lived somewhat in the country. I had to do a lot of my own landscaping myself, so I had a lot more landscaping equipment. I had a tractor, I had a weed eater, the whole nine. Um, second house I bought was in the city and all the houses around us were professionally landscaped, so one of the reasons, another reason I wanted to do the home setting thing is to get away from all that keeping up with the Jones stuff. But anyway, I paid a landscaper and um, I wound up having the nicely manicured yard and the whole bit. And I got rid of all that stuff, all, all the tools that I had that I did um, my landscaping with. So now um, I'm on acreage out in the country again. Um, and I've got all of these brambles and briars back here. Well, not all of them, but probably from right here forward that has to come out. And um, I don't have a weed whacker or weed or whatever you want to call it. So I think we're going to be um, in for an annoying morning of, we'll use my little sawzall and the good old tools that uh, we were blessed with to pull them out. So uh, not going to be fun, but they got to get out of there. Let's get to it. <laughs> So 
So most of you probably know how these work by now. It's a pretty simple operation. You just got a clamp with a pin that's on your fence post, and then you can loosen the uh, receiving end, which is just uh, this clamp with a hole that tightens down by um, turning on this nut. And you can raise and lower um, these clamps to adjust for where you want them to be. Um, well, so how we usually do this is um, we'll set the bottom one first so that the gate can rest on it. And then I just loosened this one because it was up higher and sent it down to meet this one. So now I'm just going to tighten up on this bolt. So we got the gate mounted up. I'm not too sure I'm happy with that gap right there. So I might have to um, loosen the hinges that are on the galvanized post and just drop this whole gate down just a tiny bit. I'm not so much worried about animals getting in. Um, an animal can get into this property no matter what. But this space under here, I'm more worried about my dogs getting out. Our little border collie pup, Mia specifically, because she's still kind of tiny. Um, the other two big dogs, they probably could fit in there if they really squeeze themselves, but I don't think that's going to be an issue for them. But I'd still like to lower this thing about two or three inches anyway. All right, that's a lot better. I've still got about, I'd say, five or six inches right there of space. But I'm almost bottomed out on that side, so I really can't go any lower. Uh, I don't think that's a big deal, but if I'm really concerned about it when I see um, the dogs over here, if I think that they can fit under there, I'll probably just build this up with some soil um, to make up the difference or I'll throw some gravel in here. But I think it's going to be fine the way it is. So there's our new opening created by removing a lot of these briars and brambles. And we shaved up some of this tree right here so that we don't get whacked in the head when we drive through with the quad. So uh, you wanna go give these to the goats, little guy? Yeah. All right, cool. Well, there you go, guys. As you can see, we've created enough room for a quad to get through uh, without any obstruction. And then we had to trim up some of the branches behind the fence too, so that we were able to open it all the way. Um, but I'm pretty happy with that, it's looking good. So I'm gonna get these tools packed away in the truck and then we got this pile of nastiness to deal with. We'll just back up to the burn pile and toss it in. Ouch. Well, that's about the 40,000th time I've been stabbed today. Hey, 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 hey. Where you going, little girl? <laughs> well, I think that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for following along, putting our gate up. Glad to have you with us. Please, 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 if you get a second, just hit that like button because it really lets YouTube know that we're putting out good content and that you like what you see and it'll help promote the video a lot more. If you haven't already subscribed, please be sure to do that and leave a comment if you like. We always like the comments. We try to get back to every single person that comments. All right, guys, we'll catch you on the next video. See ya.